Everybody night. How are you blessed and highly flavored, prosperous, victorious, and anointed, ready to kick butt? Amen. Because we're the head and not the tail. Glory. <laughs> God is good all the time. Yes, even when we're boneheads. Oh, how he loves us. Second Peter chapter one. Pull out those swords, let's sharpen them up. Remember, this is not a Bible study, it's a training session. We are warriors, we are in a war, there's a battle. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. <laughs> Second Peter chapter one. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Woohoo. <laughs> Woohoo. It's hot in here. Let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us what? All things. His divine power has given to us all things. His knowledge and divine power. That means the power that carries everything. Amen. Has been given to us all things to that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, that's endurance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, in other words, if you keep this up and continue, amen, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call. Everyone say call. What does the word call mean? It doesn't mean somebody's calling you on the phone. Amen. In the spirit, it means battle. Make your battle. Amen. Make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are called by his glory and virtue. That is a higher level of life or a higher level of existence. Making this battle should be a high priority in your life. By making this battle a high priority in your life, it will advance your destiny. I didn't say fulfill it. I said advance it. Now, what is your destiny? Your destiny is your infiltration into the world of corruption <laughs> without getting taken out. I mean, that's the bottom line, isn't it? Well, we're to infiltrate the world that's in corruption. And rescue as many souls as possible without getting taken out ourselves. So, but without a battle, you don't advance. Everything is a price, and the price is fight, 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 fight. Remember, we are called to battle. 
Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many souls as possible. So there's a place where God is trying to advance us and advance us into our destiny. Then destiny is not the end. Amen? Destiny is not the end. So many times people think that destiny is, oh, i got to fulfill my destiny. You can't fulfill your destiny. God fulfills your destiny. But the cooperation of the fight and the battle and the purpose. So there are certain things that you and I got to cooperate with to advance the destiny, to advance us so that we can take more territory. Second, Peter, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1. Advancing your destiny. Second Timothy chapter one. And verse eight. Second Timothy chapter one, verse eight. You remember we talked about um, that praise and worship ambushes our enemies. Amen. That's a battle. What you sow is what you reap. Amen? Listen, don't get caught up in yourself while you worship. You sing every one of those words that go up there. Why? That's a battle. So many people get caught up in themselves and they get emotionally, I'm done. You're not done. You're not done till he's done. We have to fight and one of the things we have to do, he says, deny yourself. So while you worship the Lord, see, it's got nothing about how you feel. Too many people make decisions in how they feel. That's what gets them out of position. Believe me, there's times when people don't feel like worshiping God. They don't feel like praising God. But you know what? God don't care. He don't care how you feel. But I'll tell you what, he knows how you feel. So if he knows how you feel, and you choose to worship him, <laughs> he's got something ready for you. Because he rewards those who diligently seek him. See, that's a process of seeking. And the more you sow, the more you reap life. The more you're sowing, the more you're changing. Don't let your emotions tell you, I'm tired. Oh, I, that's enough. Three songs, I'm done. Oh, you wuss. That's not what it's about. This is a battle. It's a matter of life and death. Does everybody get it? Don't get, look it, don't sit down. I bet you if you're waiting in line to cash a check for 14, 20 hours, you probably would. People sit down, I'm not enough. Oh. Now, come on, you people shop till they pass out. Amen? Not only that, you're in the presence of God. What kind of honor and respect is it to turn the presence of God to turn your back on them? You know, people don't realize that the Word says, because they don't believe the Word enough, that two or more that are gathered together, he's in the midst. And it says he searches those who worship him in truth and in spirit. So don't quit. Don't give up. And don't fall on your face and fall asleep. It's offensive. Does everybody get this? This is important. You want to allow God to advance your destiny? Then you've got to cooperate. And the first thing you've got to cooperate is in your death. Amen? It's a good night to die. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Are we there yet? Let's speak it. Therefore, do not be an idiot. I mean, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his 
prisoner, me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Sufferings. What are sufferings? You're going to be persecuted. You know what's one of the sufferings? How your feelings. You're going to have to suffer through what you feel. Hallelujah. Who has saved us and, and done what? Called us with a holy calling. That means there's a holy war going on. It's a holy battle. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. What's his purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. Isn't that why he came and manifested? Amen. And then he left us a sword. Too many people's swords on the shelf. Purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before what? Before what? Before what? Time began. Wow. Before time began. Began. He called us with a holy calling, a holy battle before time started. Why? Because we were with him before he sent us. But it has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought the life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed preacher and apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you Keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know that all those in Asia have turned away from me, um, among from whom also uh, Phileas and Hermonius, whatever his name is. And the Lord grant them mercy. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, in this again, we have a holy calling. In other words, we are in a battle that's honored by heaven. It is involved in eternity. What's going on in here is going to affect other things in the, in the eternal realm. And it's already started before time even began. You were called before time. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 3. Glory. And what is your destiny? Infiltration. Infiltration. In verse 1, Hebrews 3. Glory. Let's speak it. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly what? In other words, the heavenly battle? You're a partaker. Remember in Revelation 12, it says, and war broke out in heaven. <laughs> Still going on. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in his all his house, in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and as much as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. This is where the Lord says, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. What house is he talking about? Your temple. Amen. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterwards. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, whose house we are, whose house we are, if what? If we hold fast the confidence and then rejoice into the hope firm to the end. 
Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in a day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. If they're going astray in their house, it means they were not consistent. And they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of the anointing, which is called Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, which is bondage, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. See, one of the things that's important is recognition. You must recognize certain things. In other words, you must recognize that you were born of the Spirit. You are a spirit. God is spirit. A body was prepared for Jesus. A body was prepared for his son. And a body is prepared for all of his sons and daughters. The thing was, is the bodies were already here. When you accept, when you are born of the Spirit, you are now spirit in this body. This body now serves you. You don't serve the flesh. We are spirit. That's why it says we are blessed every spiritual blessed seated in heavenly places amen we are no longer this is this is just a place temporary we are now eternal your body is temporary but now you are in a body you are a spirit looking through these eyes you're using these hands you are now the house of god the temple of god in this realm the only thing that's holding you here is this body once this body, it's just like a, a, a person that goes on uh, out in space. The only thing that's keeping that person in space is a space suit. Well, now you got an earth suit. Amen? And it's always screaming and kicking. It always wants its way. So you must have dominion over this earth suit called flesh, the old man. Amen? But you must, be, you must begin to recognize that you are a spirit in this body. See, so many times people lose sight of who they are. Without, when you begin to lose that you are a spirit in this body, you begin to lose your identity. Why? Because you are a son or a daughter of the spirit of God. And God is spirit. Amen? That's why we are born of the spirit. Everybody okay? Your body is the house, the temple of God with a calling, a purpose, and a destiny to fulfill a military mission. A military mission. You've been called to fulfill a military mission. And so many people haven't gotten born again to fulfill it. There's a load of people out there that still need to get born again to fulfill this mission and get in part of the God's army. Remember, Jesus is known as the commander-in-chief, the Lord of hosts. Too many people are still caught up in the religion stuff. Amen? Now, refusing to recognize your fight in the battle to upkeep and maintain your house is rebellion. It's rebellion. When people do not fight, they are rebelling. The reason why people don't fight as much is because they're looking for a feeling. They're too led by how they feel. Well, I don't feel like it tonight. 
I'm tired. Praise God. I'm lonely. No, you're not. You either have a Holy Spirit or a demon. You ain't lonely. Hallelujah. In fact, you can still have the Holy Spirit and demons. That's why there's chambers in this room, in this house. Remember, Jesus said there's a mansion waiting for you. <laughs> You're in one right now. Psalm 68. Who's in your rooms? That you're not collecting rent from. Man, I had demons living in my house for free for years. I was the one paying the price for them. Oh, happy days. Psalm 68, advancing your destiny. We must begin to recognize certain things. Recognition, always being alert, being consistent. Cooperation. Psalm 68, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God. Sing songs to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah. And rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solidarity in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a what? Dry land. Rebellion will dry you up. As soon as you begin to cooperate with rebellion, you begin to dry up. You can't do nothing until you repent and begin to cooperate. Does everybody get it? Rebellion stops the flow of the presence of God in a person's life. That's why people who are in rebellion out there, they're not saturated. They're not anointed. Amen? They're still living for themselves. They're living in a feeling. They're not fulfilling their mission or their call, their purpose. Again, rebellious are not saturated with the presence. There's no revelation. There's no anointing or activation because God has silenced himself. He's done what? He silenced himself. And, it, and don't get me wrong. To the person, God is silent. God is trying to, but because their heart is hardened, they can't receive. Amen? It's like turning off the, uh, the station. They, they, they're not in tune anymore. Ephesians 4. He who sows to the Spirit reaps life. He who sows to the flesh reaps corruption. It's that simple. So when you react, you better repent quickly. Does everybody get it? You react. This is what well, you and I got to look at ourselves all the time. Did I react? Did I react or did I respond? If you're not recognizing that, there's a disconnect. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 4, and I'll tell you what, you, that will stop the advancement of your destiny. Ephesians 4, verse 1, there's a lot of reactors out there. Some of them are nuclear. They're about to explode any minute, man. You don't know what's going on. And you can get near them, and you know it, man. You can feel their radiation.
Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which, which you were called. Again, if you're not fulfilling your calling in the area of battle, fight, you can't advance in destiny. It's impossible. If you're a person that's constantly waiting on God, and don't get me wrong, there is a time to wait on God, but while you're waiting, you're fighting. You're battling. You're binding, you're losing, you're driving out demonic forces. You're taking authority every day. The Bible says before you enter, go somewhere, bind the strong man that you may plunder its goods. People don't think about the warfare. And the Lord knows my heart. Right? He knows, but that he does know your heart. He knows whether you, he's going to advance you or delay you. Amen? He knows whether you're sowing in the flesh or in the spirit. He knows whether you're reacting or reactor. He knows exactly about everything about us. And he's trying to get us a position to advance us all the time. Always. Did you ever say something you, and didn't do it? It's called an unfulfilled vow. Amen? You cannot advance without fulfilling it. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Now, that doesn't mean you, if you got divorced, you go back and marry the same person. Amen? Although I did, but anyways. I mean, but praise God, I fulfilled it. <laughs> right, hon? <laughs> huh. My marriage is bliss. And it's blessed too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where were we? Verse 1 again. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism of God and the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on I, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the, the earth, known as Hades and hell. And he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipment for the training of the saints for the working of ministry for the edification of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing that we should no longer be children not able to recognize grumbling and complaining selfish, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of doctors with the coronavirus and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Man, if I see another person with a mask on, I want to pull it. I put a post on Facebook today. I said, I don't wear a mask or gloves. It's simple. I know the truth. Anyway, they're trying to talk to you. What the heck are you saying? And then they take it off to talk to you like this. <laughs> anyway. I mean, they're sweating like crazy, these rubber gloves they got on, you know. They should have got those Darth Vader masks and ended the whole thing. Hallelujah. 
that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, that's cooperation, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth. That word growth means advancement. Causes advancement of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In the process of time, directed by prophetic moments of opportunity in your calling, in the battles, it will advance your destiny, which is, the, again, the ability to infiltrate through training and taking opportunities that God opens up. Listen, God will all, once you've been trained, I'm telling you, you get tested. A test always follows a training. Amen? And if you pass it, you advance. If you don't, you repeat. Amen? If you repent quick enough, you constantly, you, 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 you don't go back. But if you take too long to repent, you find yourself going backwards. Amen? I'll say this again. It is in the process of time directed by prophetic moments of opportunity in the calling, in the battle, because you're battling. It will advance your destiny, which is your ability to infiltrate. Get the tape. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are training opportunities of change. Amen? Train. So every time you're challenged, you go through a trial or whatever, it's an opportunity to change. It's an opportunity to advance. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians 9. Hallelujah. Hon, you can read my notes when we get home, okay? <laughs> you can share them. You can call everybody, make sure they got it right. Oh, happy days. First Corinthians chapter 9. Is everybody there? Verse 19. Let's speak it together. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, or as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law. Not being without the law toward God, but under the law toward Christ. That I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. In other words, he's advancing in destiny. He's able to shift to be whatever God wants him to be and still maintain the same character of Christ. Amen? That doesn't mean you go into cross-dressing and stuff like that. Amen? You stay, okay? You don't need, you, you be Christ. Don't get something goofy. Let's go a little further. Is everybody all right? Oh, happy days. You all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in the race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. 
Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who what? Beats the air, but I dis uh -huh. discipline. I what? I what? Discipline my body. In other words, the flesh don't, does, I don't serve the flesh, the flesh serves me. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. These are requirements of maintaining a position of opportunity to advance. So what's the requirement? Discipline. Discipline. How about the fear of the Lord? That's a requirement. Amen? It's reverence and honor and respect to the Lord. Able to shift into a different setting without compromising the righteous character of Christ. In other words, you're able to be whoever God wants you to be. Again, just be careful. Make sure it's God telling you what you're supposed to be doing. 1 Corinthians 1. People tell me some goofy things. Oh, the Lord told me to get tattoos all over my body. No, he didn't. That was a familiar spirit. In fact, I can't imagine why Christians get, go out and get tattoos and put Jesus on them. You're supposed to express Jesus. They're not supposed to read it on you. Amen? You want to be that way? Then put it on your forehead. Then they can really see it. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Everybody okay? Let's speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Praise God. We're all qualified for that, aren't we? But God has chosen the foolish things of the world, yep, to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are what? Mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But to him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So do you believe that sanctification is needed? Of course. He says, come out from among them and be separate. Don't touch those things that are what? Unclean. Unclean. Sanctification is essential. You are called in a battle that is eternal connected, totally connected in the eternal realm, even though we're in the physical realm. Amen? Direct, <laughs> the, the direct effect of all of this is the outcome of whether souls are coming in to the kingdom or not. It's about souls. It's about driving out demonic forces. They can't get rescued without driving out demonic forces. Amen? We're to be taking territories in the Spirit. Proverbs 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Are you fighting? And I don't mean for your life. Are you a warrior? In verse 1, Proverbs 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
advancing your destiny. My son, do not forget my law, which is my word, but let your heart keep my commandments. Those are his requests. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Now these are all requirements to advance your destiny. Verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats overflow with what? New wine. That's fresh anointing. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. So you can expect correction and direction. Remember, correction, direction brings protection. Amen? Amen. So you're called into a battle that, again, is eternal. This is the counsel, correction, and direction and preparation that God gives us in this proverb to advance your destiny. Everything takes cooperation, but the fight is a part of the cooperation. And everything you and I do, we fight. Romans 8. Romans 8, 8. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. Now, he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's the beauty of praying in tongues. And we know that all things, all things Work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are what? Called. That means that if you're in the battle, if you maintain the battle, everything's going to turn to the good. It's when you get discouraged and moved out of that battle that things begin to turn another course. Amen? The moment you stop battling every day, is that's opening the door to the enemy. It's our, look at, when the enemy knows that you are a, ba a warrior, he comes. He'll come in any way he can. So you must maintain that fight and that battle to push them back and keep them. Because every time you let up, look at every morning you get up, they're coming at you. They're preparing a trap. They're shooting arrows. They're setting up someone. They're getting ready to use someone to get to you. Every day. They're trying to get you to compromise. They're trying to get you to complacent. Carnal reasoning. Whatever they can do to prevent you from getting dressed with the full armor and fighting. Why? Because it's our responsibility to push them back and create an atmosphere for God. 
Amen? When you stop that, again, they're coming at you every day. They know. They throw the bait in there. Once you bite the bait, it doesn't mean they pull it then. They wait. They wait. They wait. It's like bass fishing. They wait until that moment. Then they pull it. You blow it, and it affects everyone else around you. Does everybody get this? It's vital. Sufferings, battles, we're in it. Disappointments, attacks, needs. They attack your mind, a mess with your emotions. But he says if you maintain the battle, all things are going to work out. Only if you maintain that battle. The battle will advance you in your infiltration. You must have a desire to fight. You must, the word says that as Christians, we must hate evil. Too many people pet it. Amen? We're to infiltrate, expose, and distinguish <laughs> what's up in every area. In other words, recognize. We're to recognize the spirits. We're to recognize the attacks. What, what type of spirit is it? What's going on? What principalities are involved? We should know that. Amen? Why? Because we have the technology. He's called the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 10. And you don't have to look up Google to find that out. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10. In verse 3. Let's speak it. For though we walk in the physical, I don't like to use the word flesh because it confuses people. Amen? We're walking in the physical. I hope you're not walking in the flesh. We do not war according to the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. That's something that has bait has been taken. Amen? That means the enemy has access to you. We're to be what? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, is that fighting? Yes. That's a battle. We're fighting that. We're casting them down. We're getting rid of them. We're driving them out. Muzzling every mouth of the voice of the stranger. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought and every voice into captivity to the obedience of Christ, the anointing, and being ready to punish all disobedience, when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. Wow. So the battle of thoughts, memory, voices, to shut every door that has been opened and cast out every demonic force and every deception. They're trying to bait us all the time. It will delay your course of destiny. Why? Because if you're not fulfilling the call to fight, you can't advance. It's just impossible. You can wait on God all till you die. Amen? But you won't advance in your destiny here. Here is it important. Here, in this realm, right now, in this present time, this is important. It's not about, it no, should be no more concern about, am I going to make it home? That sh shouldn't be a concern anymore if you're walking right with God. Am I going to fall? Well, if you'll fight, you won't. Amen? Again, if you maintain a battle attitude, a fighting attitude, and everything that you do, seeing through the physical, into the spirit of what's influencing, you will continue to push back the enemy. And he won't, he's going to still try to mess with you, but you will overcome every attack and every temptation. Is everybody okay? 
2 Peter chapter 2. So is speaking this prayer booklet, these penetrating prayers fighting. Amen. You should be carrying them with you all the time. Should be one in your car. Should be a dozen in your car. Amen. When you don't know what to pray, you pray in the spirit, and he'll lead you to something. You know, there's so many people that but even when they come to the Lord, they're not interested. They can't read the Bible. You give them a Bible that usually stays, they use it for something else. But you can give them something you, you can arm them with instantly. Here's a prayer booklet. Here's a prayer. Speak this. Why? Because that's, that's our weapons, isn't it? It's the sword of the spirit, sword of the breath. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the Second Timothy, I'm sorry. I said Peter? Oh man, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Some things just don't change. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's Second Timothy. Hallelujah. Are we there now? Verse 1. Second Peter. <laughs> I like it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. <laughs> you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, what would you consider a faithful person? How about one that's consistent? Amen? One that's consistent. One that you know that you can trust more. Amen? When a person is consistent, especially in attitude, in motive, amen? How about decisions? Man, if you, if you know a person that's consistent in making wrong decisions, <laughs> it ain't right. Right? You're not going to trust them. But if you know a person that's, and it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't make mistakes. But how about somebody that's quick to repent? Yeah. See, this is an area where God is looking for faithful individuals, servants, realizing that we are stewards of God's goods. We're stewards of his word. We're stewards of everything. In fact, you and I don't know nothing. Amen? Well, that's something that you and I must recognize. He owns it all. It's all his. We're just stewards of it. So we're to maintain God's goods. Verse 3. Hallelujah. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier in Jesus Christ. No one engaged in the warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he does not, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Give you what? Understanding in in all things. Consider what I say. Remember, verse 8, that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer troubles and evil doer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. 
Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. But be diligent, which is mean consistent, to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And I'm going to close at Proverbs 8. Hallelujah. Proverbs 8, 32. Oh, happy days. Oh, we'll start somewhere else here. Yeah, I think it was something else. Proverbs 8. Oh, yeah. Everybody there? Let's start at verse 30. Hallelujah. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in pro. I'm in. Never mind. Hallelujah. Is everybody in Proverbs yet? <laughs> Proverbs 8. Dear God, help me. Verse 32. Now, therefore, listen to me. Are we at the right place now? My children. For blessed are those who what? Keep my ways. And hear instruction. Hello. And be what? And be what? Wise. And do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates. Waiting at the posts of my doors. Now, What's he talking about? Wisdom. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Now this is wisdom from above. Again, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Amen. So wisdom and understanding are a part of of advancing your destiny. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is always directing me and you. But one of the things he's always directing us is to battle first. Fight. Get up, fight. Get up and fight. Get up and fight. When somebody falls down, what do they usually tell them? Get up. Amen? Get up and fight. Without a battle, you cannot advance. We have a call and a purpose and a destiny that we want to fulfill. And we want to stand before God to know We've done all that we were supposed to do. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect this seed with the blood of Christ and seal it with the anointing so it grows and bears fruit for your glory. As you raise up warriors, Lord, that we will carry the anointing and the message to the world that there is a way of escape, and that is you. You, Master you. We thank you and we give you all the glory. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>